Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Jack Vlogs. Today we are taking a look at episode 97 of Samurai Jack Season 5. So, immediately picking off where we left off, Jack walked off with this mysterious figure into the mist. And Ashi has continued to look for Jack, wondering where he is. And as he as she's she rides off into a blimp to view over a landscape to see where she where he last went and she runs into two hooded figures who reveal themselves to be the woolies and i'm pretty sure you know where this is going as ashi continues to make her travels throughout the land she runs into various characters that have appeared in previous episodes of samurai jack as they tell their tales about how jack saved them from certain doom under aku's evil clutches <laughs> And it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting, it's been done a lot in other shows before, like, say, I don't know, like, a lot of anime shows I've watched have done this over and over again, like, where they say, this man saved my life, and they did so many amazing things, but with here, it makes more, it was much more meaningful, because here's the thing you gotta understand, Samurai Jack, it, with the exception of the first three episodes, Scotsman Saves Jack and Birth of Evil, Jack rarely had continuity, and it, it, mainly because they just weren't allowed to, and the fact that we are now having these callbacks to previous episodes really does mean a lot. We get to see a lot of the characters that we grew up with, a little bit older, but still kicking it. <laughs> like, for instance, I'll go into detail about some of the people that appear, like, obviously the Woolies make their comeback. If you know the episode, Jack saves these group of furry creatures called the Woolies, who were being tortured and mistreated by these creatures that are basically alien smurfs called the Critchalites, all played by Tom Kenny. They say, ah, come on, make, make your way, you stupid beast. That's literally all, that's, that's the same way they talk. It's, it's like, it's like that episode of Spongebob doing Squidward. That's basically what it is. And Jack comes along and kicks all their asses and saves the Woolies from subjugation. <laughs> So, and then after that, we also have the three blind archers from, well, the three blind archers, who are no longer blind, obviously. They were under control of an evil wishing well, and Jack, knowing this, instead of taking the biting the bullet and making the wish to return home, he destroys the wishing well, completely disabling any control that, that, that the evil well can have over other people. So that he, it won't harm anyone else. And at that moment, yeah, we find out later, we found out apparently, oh yeah, Aku made that thing. Unsurprisingly, of course, Aku ha was responsible for making that well. And the archers are now like, we will stand against Aku. If you need us to fight with him, we'll be there. Which has me really excited considering what happened last episode with the Scotsman. Oh, it's going to be a big, big-ass battle when we come back. And then, after that, the daughter of Aku, Ashi, the daughter, one of the daughters of Aku, Ashi, meets the children of Aku. You know, from the rave episode. <laughs> yeah, so Livia, the little girl who was, along with many others, who were captured by, who were hypnotized by Aku's evil music in Jack and the Rave, she now hosts a rave again, this time paying tribute to the samurai. Because she notices, like, Ashi's like, where can I find the samurai? Like, all the music stops, spotlight goes on her, what do you want with the samurai? Because everyone meets her with this, like, form of hostility at first. Because they think that she's gonna go, they think that, when, like, the first three people that she runs into, they all meet her with hostility. Because they, they think that she's going after the samurai to kill her, to kill him. And even though that was the case in the earlier episodes, that's not at all here. So, yeah, Ashi now learns of what Aku did to them and how Jack saved all the children from Aku's evil grasp. And it was very cool. It was actually a real, it was like this, this song sequence 
They snuck the word hell in there. By the way, there's a lot of cursing. There's actually some cursing in this episode that they managed to get by. Uh, at one point, uh, yeah, uh, they, they say the word hell like they do in the song. One of the characters they run into later, they say, damn, badass. And yeah, that's... You can definitely tell uh, Gany knows his audience and knows that we've definitely gotten older. That's, uh, that's safe to assume. So anyway, after that, Ashi continues to find Jack. She runs into this pond, and then she has this traumatic childhood flashback to when she was a kid, and her mother forced her to jump to a pile of coal to become one with Aku, because Aku's dark, and she figured, burning hot coal will help you understand the darkness that is Aku. She gets kicked in there, and... She's, like, all burning and stuff, and it's, ugh, it's really fucked up. And then she basically jumps down into the pond and watches herself. And it's from this subtle fact that we find out that's not, those aren't clothes that she's wearing. That's, uh, that's not a bodysuit, that's a painted suit with ash. And, yeah, this entire time she's been naked. Put that together. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something. So anyway, yeah, she gets the ash off, she puts on a new dress, and she looks like Tinkerbell, just with black hair and not as small or angry anymore, at least. So then after that happens, she goes into a bar. Yeah, I know where this goes. Oh, the, the, the samurai killing lady walked into a bar and said, oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah, type in comments. <laughs> And then she runs into the samurai. In the fourth season episode, this black samurai character named the samurai, played by David Allen Greer, now played by Keegan Michael Key from Key and Peele, which is actually a very good casting choice. He actually sounded a lot like David Allen Greer if you were older, and I was like, I couldn't. Rec I thought that was the same actor, but then I heard him, and I was like, wait, that's Key from Key and Peele? <laughs> This guy's got talent. He can just, like, voice match people. No wonder. I mean, it kind of makes sense, because he played the mummy in Gennady Tartakovsky's Hotel Transylvania 2 to voice match CeeLo Green, and he did a pretty good job voice matching him in that. And anyway, so, yeah, he runs into Key, and, or the samurai, and the samurai's like, I used to be a badass samurai! Like, see, and they stick in the word badass. She, he says that... Damn, girl, shut the door! Um, yeah, she's pretty much telling her all this stuff. And then it goes into, like, this really, like, funky flashback where she, where we basically see the samurai in his prime, or lack thereof, because if you've seen the episode, his muscles are fake. He wears, like, this shell, whatever, and then Jack busts it completely. And, uh, of course... He even shows Samurai Jack in this really cool art style. Oh yeah, I gotta mention, a lot of the flash there are a lot of flashbacks in this episode when Ashi meets up with a lot of the people who have met Samurai Jack. Not not just the Samurai, but also the Rave Kids, the Archers, and the Woolies. You see these reanimated sequences. It doesn't do what Dragon Ball Super does, where they just reuse footage from Dragon Ball Kai to tell the story. No, they actually reanimate the footage. And granted, I like seeing some of those footage clips again, but I appreciate seeing those moments reanimated and with a new perspective. And they look good. They really look good. You can tell they're different just because it's been many years and the char some of the lines have gotten a bit thinner, if that's even possible. Uh, and some of the characters, some of the some of the models look a bit different, probably because it's in HD. And, yeah, that's something. And I really liked it. So, yeah. And another character that makes a quick cameo, like, a literally, like, a 20-second a cameo, is one of the villains from Season 2. Demon Girl! And it's... You can definitely tell... I don't know if this was the case in the original few seasons, but... They must have added a filter to Kevin Michael Richardson's voice when he did the voice of Demongo because his voice sounds a, a tad lower than it did before. But then again, Kevin Michael Richardson has a pretty low voice already, so I would assume they probably added the filter in this time. 
Because he, he sounds more like the Joker now than he did previously. Because... Yeah, but it was great to see him. He, he just appeared for a few seconds. I have returned uh, to claim some warriors for my essence. And then they all look at they all look at him. He stops and realizes, I must have gone to the wrong place. And then he just walks away. <laughs> it's, it was amazing just to see him for those couple of seconds. It was great. So yeah, that happens. And... Ashi walks out of the bar and meets up with what I can assume is one of the creatures from the Traveling Creatures episode, those hoodie guys that ride that ride this giant creature that takes Jack to the Guardian. The, the guard, in the Guardian episode, Jack and the Traveling Creatures, there are these, like, wanderer, these uh, nomad creatures that wear hoods and stuff that ride across this, uh, that ride along with this giant creature that goes throughout the water who has ancient wisdom and all that and they did meet jack around the way so i can assume just based on how this character sounded that was probably them one of them and tells do you seek the samurai are you his friend and here's the thing you gotta understand about that question in the first few episodes in the first few moments of this episode when she met the Woolies, the, the Woolies asked her the same question. And she was like, I don't know. This time, with her new dress and shit, she's like, yes. Because she wasn't sure because she wasn't... Because, granted, in the previous episode, she did see the evil ways of Aku, but she didn't know what to believe because I was taught my whole life to hate this guy. And I don't know if I should really follow that. She was just conflicted. And now, it's painfully clear to her that she he's not the bad guy. So, yeah, you're his friend. And then, so yeah, the little character guides Ashi to where to go. She follows the trail. The little guy disappears. The nomad disappears. And then we see the mysterious figure and Jack in a graveyard. They're not dead yet. And, yeah, well, anyway, the, the mysterious figure turns out to be this omen character which is what it's, his name is in the credits. And... Oh, the character's name... The character turns out to be an omen, which is this, like, floating samurai shogun creature who's basically telling Jack, you have failed. You must end it. And they're basically in the process of committing... of Jack committing seppuku. Which is, from what I've done research on, is like an honorable way to... It's it's an honorable way to kill yourself if you feel that you dishonored your family in some way or another. So anyway, yeah, Ashi's like, No, you didn't do anything wrong. Y you saved the children. They, they didn't die at all. And after some convincing and some fighting with the omen creature, and much hesitation to continue with the seppuku process... Jack stands up, slices the omen, and then the process completely ends. And it's at that moment that I think it's safe to assume that Jack has finally found his way again. Or at least he's at least found the inspiration to continue in his old ways again. And he just tells Ashi, like, I like your hair and your dress, too. And that's, that's hinting at something. Not saying anything. Maybe they got something going on. Uh, uh, Gendy, you trying to tell us something? But anyway, yeah, that happens. And the last thing we hear is, so what do we do now? I'm going to find my sword. And I was like, fuck yes. Waiting for the next episode. Can't wait to see it. So anyway, yeah, this would... And, oh yeah, another, another thing I forgot to mention. Meanwhile, all of this is happening. Scaramouche, who we thought was dead in the last episode, in the first episode, is alive. He's now a bouncing head, and he's, he still knows, his memory is still intact, he still remembers that Jack has no sword, and tries to go on his way to find a phone or some kind of communication device to get to him. He takes a boat, he has a hard time getting on the boat, because he's just a head, he needs a body in order to get on, and... He finds a guy's body, he insults him by saying that he's a talking penis. Liter literally what he says. Literally what he says. The, the, again, Adult Swim can get away with it. 
he gets into a phone booth, but runs into some trouble with a bunch of dogs, and one that particularly looks like Astro from the Jetsons tells him, Oh, you, you're talking to us, mate. Yeah, and they're basically they're all British dogs. It's funny. So, yeah. He attempts to talk to Aku and say that Jack lost his sword, but then he gets cut off by the dog right just before he can say, Jacko lost his, and then he gets taken, thrown out to the water, and that's pretty much where he's left out from then on. So, that's going to lead up to something. At some point or another, Aku is going to find out that Jack has no sword, and all hell is going to break loose. That's, I'm calling it right now, like, somehow or another, Scaramouche is going to get to Aku. We don't know how yet, but we'll see, eventually. <sighs> or maybe he'll run into the, uh, he'll run, in, maybe he'll run into the Triceroquin down in the ocean, and then he'll, uh, trick them into getting to Aku. I don't know, because he's out in the ocean, but we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, and I, I might as well remind, the location that Scaramouche went to was the seaport that Jack and the Scotsman went to when Jack lost his memory, when he fought the sirens. And so yeah, that was an interesting callback. So I think it's, in, this was a really good episode. This was basically a, a giant callback to previous episodes of Samurai Jack. It's very clear that Gendy is aware of the fan base of Samurai Jack, and he knows that a lot of us have seen or probably marathoned through a lot of these episodes and just to see these these characters and all these locations come back into fruition is just amazing I, I really love this episode and i could watch it over and over again and not get sick of it i i think this might be one of my top 10 favorite episodes now of just samurai jack in general this has got to be one of my top 10 like this is easily one of the best episodes i've seen so far and i can't wait to see what happens next week and what will what we're building up to in the future. I know that with the previous episode, Scotsman is definitely building up the chance to start a rebellion against Aku and a, a public attack against him. And there's a high chance that in that moment, Jack's probably going to lead the army. He's probably going to wear that crown and cape outfit like he did in the first, in the Jack, in the season three episode, Jack and the Traveling Creatures, where he was, where he fought the Guardian. We saw this image of him standing at all with the crown and cape and white shirt and everything with the sword in hand and that's probably going to be him when we see him go up against Aku and it's going to be amazing I haven't read the comic and I know they use that similar ending in the ending of the comic book but we haven't but this is going to be really cool I can't wait to see it so anyway yeah Jack's going to be finding his up his is going to be finding his sword hopefully finding his way again and uh Scaramouche is back, and eventually Aku's gonna find out that Jack has no sword, yet, and it's gonna be an awesome time. I can't wait to see next week's episode. Stay tuned, guys. Watch out!